so you will see in this particular lecture how we are going to uh, frame a review question okay so these are the learning objectives for this session at the end of this lecture you should be able to elucidate the qualities of an ideal review topic so what topic is a good topic you might all have a question running in your mind how do i choose the review topic how do i choose a topic for conducting a systematic review i have no idea i am very new to this so how do i choose a review topic which will be eventually published it is not just for uh, doings uh, it is not just for the sake of doing it if i have a review question or a review topic in my mind how do i frame the review question we usually follow the pico st format more generally or more commonly known as pico format and we will understand the variations of the pico format so pico varies according to the review question and the type of the uh, review question that you are going to follow so we will see the variations of the pico format so these are the three learning objectives which we will achieve at the end of this lecture so i have divided the presentation into two parts one is choosing an ideal topic how some pointers i will give you on how to choose an ideal topic and the second part of the presentation will be actually framing the review question so as dr babani has shared with you the steps of a systematic review we are now in the first step as you can see framing the review question and as you can see framing the review question is at the top of the ladder and as such it is the most important part of the systematic review only a clear review question a clear and properly framed review question can help you in conducting a systematic review with uh, good standards okay how to choose the review topic i i hope some of you are in the middle of your career some of you might have some experience with systematic reviews some of you are imagining or trying to do a systematic review some of you are very new so these are some pointers if you are on the uh, wall whether should i consider doing a systematic review or is it too much for me i can understand most of the concepts of systematic reviews are new and they seem complicated but bit by bit broken down to smaller pieces they become very easy and please remember that systematic reviews are not going to be conducted by a single person they will be conducted by a team of people some of whom might be beginners some of whom might be mid level persons and some of whom might be experts so you have to position yourself in a team of reviewers and then you have to work on small parts of it so systematic review is a team work and the work although it seems too large it will be broken down into smaller pieces if you divide the work so how to choose a systematic review topic the most important criteria is to choose an area or a topic where a dilemma or uncertainty exists for example in dentistry you don't know whether a particular treatment a is better than treatment b there are two options for a particular disease let's say a fracture of the mandible there are several treatments available that may be treatment a b c d e but nobody knows for sure which treatment works best so if there is a clinical dilemma or an uncertainty in a particular area you that is a ripe area for systematic review another example is you don't know what is the causative factor for an outcome let's say you don't know what causes oral cancer i have no idea what causes oral cancer or i don't know whether a particular factor causes oral cancer or not let's say e cigarettes do we know whether e cigarettes are associated with oral cancer we don't know so these are areas where dilemmas or uncertainty exist where we don't know for sure so these are areas ripe for systematic reviews make sure that your systematic review is not already published so it should be novel or new it should be interesting to the target audience let's say you are all in dentistry so the systematic review that you are going to do should be of interest to people who are in dentistry who are currently practicing and uh, following dentistry it should be feasible feasible in the sense you should have the appropriate amount of time effort and money available with you to conduct the systematic review so most importantly you need people with different capacities there must be a statistician there ideally there should be a librarian there should be a people of uh, there should be uh, two people who are going through the articles there should be an expert member so if you can assemble such a team and if there are enough number of articles on the selected topic then we call that systematic review as feasible please remember that systematic reviews take a long time to complete for example 6 months to 1 year or maybe even 1 and 1/2 years so by the time you have completed your systematic review the questions may be outdated the topic may be outdated so make sure that you have enough time to get it completed in a reasonable time frame 
enough literature is around so dr bhavani also also talking about this whether we can do a systematic review with limited literature of course it is possible to do a systematic review without uh, enough literature but you have to make sure whether your time and effort is worth it or not there are some reviews called empty reviews which are published in cochrane's where the systematic review does not find even one eligible article and they publish those reviews as empty reviews they, they their conclusion will be that enough literature is not available for this particular topic so it is possible to do uh, but i would suggest as a beginner if you are trying to do a systematic review uh, to go for a area where there is enough literature already present uh, the next consideration would be are you going to look at a global literature base or a regional literature base or an indian literature base so depending upon the problem at hand you can define your scope and this scope also defines your publishability if you are looking only at indian studies international journals may not be interested in your findings but if you are looking at a global phenomena or across the country phenomena then it is more likely to be published but i then again it depends upon the amount of work and effort you are willing to put in and make sure that there is there isn't one already existing the next slide is more of update don't reinvent the wheel okay if you have decided a topic if you have a review question in mind go to pubmed type those keywords and see if there is a systematic review go to google scholar do a similar search go to prospero so we will talk about prospero at the end of this workshop i will come to prospero in detail so just for the time being i'm going to say that prospero is a register where all systematic reviews are registered prospectively that is that they are being done currently being done or they are going to be done in the future and then there is cochrane library so these are the four major sources where you can check for a uh, prior uh, publication of a topic which you are looking at so please make sure that you are not doing something which is already been done very very important but least emphasized please do that okay so now we are moving to the actual review question a systematic review starts with a well defined research question most of the times this is where the systematic review process starts it is in it might be in your mind or it might be lying down in front of your uh, desk on a paper or it might be an idea which was shared over coffee or tea so a systematic review always starts with a well defined research question and please remember that this step decides everything else in the systematic review all the other subsequent steps are based on the review question so please make sure that you put enough time enough effort and enough clarifications sought from your peers so that you come to a very clearly defined and accurate review question we will see some examples of review questions and it will become more clear so i was talking to you earlier about the pico format right p i c o s t this is the heart of the review question so the review question has certain parts these are the parts of the review question p stands for population i stands for intervention c stands for comparator o stands for outcomes s stands for study designs and t stands for time frame so you might have come across this pico in evidence based medicine or evidence based dentistry so this is how we construct a review question so our review question should have all or most of these characteristics so population is nothing but the characteristics of the participants we are interested in it might be age gender or other criteria intervention refers to the main treatment we are interested in comparator refers to the control group it might be a placebo or alternate intervention or a standard of care and outcomes are the measures or the things that we measure to see whether the treatment has uh, has been successful or not so this is the main effect of the treatment you should also specify how it will be measured and also you can specify the time to effect for example you can say i want to see the reduction in uh, caries at 6 months so something like that study designs so there are specific study designs which have to be included for specific types of questions uh, the next session will address that what study designs you have to include for what types of study questions so we have to mention the if necessary we can mention the study designs and the time frame time frame usually refers to the publication time frame that is i will include articles published in the last 10 years or the last 20 years sometimes it can also refer to the time of the outcome as mentioned in the outcomes at 6 weeks interval or at 6 months or one year mortality something like that 
So these are the different types of questions you can frame for systematic reviews. So sit down today and ask yourself, which of these review questions is most suited for your current endeavor? Are you looking for calculating the incidence of a particular disease condition? What proportion of the population is newly diagnosed with the problem each year? Then that, there might be a prevalence question. What proportion of the population is currently living with this problem? It might be dental caries, it might be a uh, fracture of the uh, part of the mandible or maxilla, or it might be uh, any chronic condition. Therapy, what should be done to the, treat this problem or what treatment is effective? Screening, so you might have different screening technologies for certain clinical conditions. So you can, your review question can also address a screening problem. Diagnostic accuracy, you have say two methods of diagnosis. One is histology and one is say physical examination or visual examination. Which one is better? What is the sensitivity specificity of one method? So if you are looking at studies on diagnostic studies, uh, uh, studies on diagnostic accuracy, this is your review question. You can have prognostic review questions. You can have harm, that is the side effects or the adverse effects of a particular intervention. Let's say you have uh, internal fixation for fracture of the mandible. How much harm does it cause? You can also have that as your review question. You can have etiology as your review question. Does exposure to mobile phones cause uh, cancer of the ear canal, something like that. So how can this problem be prevented? You can also have prevention questions. For example, treating uh, the tooth with some uh, sealants, does it prevent any further complications? So those sorts of questions are prevention questions. So please remember that there are different types of research review questions and you can frame any one of these. Incidence, prevalence, therapy, screening, diagnostic accuracy, prognosis, harm, etiology or prevention. Among these, the most common are prevalence, therapy, and etiology, which we will see in subsequent slides. So these are some examples of incidence prevalence questions, which I have already uh, given to you in the previous slide. Okay, let's say a prevalence example. What is the prevalence of dental caries in children aged five to 15 years in countries of the Southeast Asia region? So if you can put this question in the PICO format, what will be P? P will be children aged 5 to 15 years in countries of the Southeast Asia region. What will be I? There is no I here. Okay, so prevalence questions do not have I, they have exposure. So here they simply have the outcome. So the outcome here is prevalence of dental caries. So please remember that not every type of review question will have the PICO ST. As I said before, P is 5 to 15 year old children in countries of Southeast Asia. There is no intervention, there is no comparator but there is an outcome which is prevalence of dental caries. In order to satisfy this objective, the study designs that we have to include are cross-sectional surveys because only surveys give you prevalence. So it must be population or community based studies because hospital based studies do not give us the prevalence in the community. So uh, the time frame for this study has been fixed from 2005 to 2015. So this is an example of a prevalence systematic review. You are looking at a one condition and the prevalence of it. So this was the study that we conducted and uh, the title of the article was Dental Caries Prevalence Among 5 to 15 year old children from seer countries of WHO Systematic Review and Meta Analysis. So this is an example of a prevalence systematic review. This is an, uh, I would say a simple way of doing a systematic review. If you are beginning to do systematic reviews, uh, you, you might be more comfortable with such reviews. Let's move to the next example, a therapy or intervention example. So here the review question is, what is the clinical efficacy of green tea based mouthwashes in reducing dental plaque and gingivitis as compared to chlorhexidine or placebo in individuals with plaque induced gingivitis? So I'll give you 30 seconds to read this question again. And in your head, you can see what the PICO are. So here the population was individuals with plaque induced gingivitis. The intervention was green tea based mouthwashes. The comparator was chlorhexidine mouthwash or placebo. So here there are two comparators. I'm interested in both chlorhexidine mouthwash as well as placebo treatment. Outcome is dental plaque index and gingival inflammation index. So there are two outcomes here. So I'm interested in two outcomes. What study designs are appropriate for this? So you are looking at interventions, right? So clinical trials are the most appropriate study designs in this case. 
and the time frame that we have taken is six weeks post intervention so the intervention must be given for at least six weeks and the outcome will be measured after six weeks and we are restricting the by time frame also that is studies published from 2000 to 2018 so this is an example of a therapy intervention which fits the pico st format so this was a paper published based on that particular example efficacy of green tea based mouthwashes on dental plaque and gingival inflammation a systematic review and meta analysis so the third example is an etiology question is consumption of smokeless tobacco associated with oral malignancy in indian adults so here you can see there is no intervention per se but there is a population uh, there is an exposure and there is an outcome so for these types of questions your pico will look something like this population is adult males and females in india aged more than or equal to 18 years i'm defining what adult is exposure is smokeless tobacco consumption the comparison group will be the counterfactual or people who are not using smokeless tobacco which is understood you don't have to mention it but it is a good idea to put it down there outcomes oral malignancy you can have multiple outcomes but for the sake of simplicity i have put oral malignancy study designs here we are looking at association between a causality factor or an exposure and an outcome so the best type of studies which can establish causation are case control studies and cohort studies for such exposures and outcomes so we are interested in case control studies and cohort studies for this and we have not set any time frame we are interested in all articles published ever so this was the study based uh, published based on the previous review question smokeless tobacco associated cancers a systematic review and meta analysis of indian studies in this study we had included more than oral malignancy so there were many other types of cancers included and each outcome was one systematic review in itself so this is you can see this is a uh, you can say probably this is a combination of systematic reviews where multiple outcomes were included in one paper so these are the three examples of commonly done systematic reviews one was the prevalence systematic review the second one was a therapy or intervention systematic review and the third one was an etiology systematic review so ask yourselves this question in your current work in your current line of work or in your current day to day practice which of these three types of questions you are more likely to encounter and which of these you might be more comfortable in doing there are other types of review questions also please don't get me wrong that these are the only three types there are diagnostic reviews there as dr bhavani said there are economic analysis there are qualitative studies there are many other types of review questions but these three are the most common and as beginners i would suggest i would recommend one of these three to carry forward so review question decides everything as i said in the beginning of the lecture based on the review question we will be designing all the other parts of the systematic review so the eligibility criteria which is the topic of the next lecture will be based on the review question literature search will be based on the review question data extraction again the data extraction team will look at the review question and prepare the data extraction sheet data analysis the statistical expert will look at the review question and then do the analysis the results interpretation will also be based on the review question so the purpose of this slide is to uh, impress upon you the importance of the review question the more time you spend on deciding the review question clarifying it making it more refined the better it will be for the subsequent steps of the systematic review so uh, i am concluding with this slide systematic reviews are increasingly becoming mainstream for evidence based decision making in healthcare framing a clear and adequate research question is the most important step and the parts of a review question consist of p i c o s and t as per the variations